Trump's lawyers confirmed today that he will be attending a hearing in Manhattan on Thursday in his felony hush money case. The ex-president had considered traveling to Georgia instead for a crucial hearing in his Fulton County election interference case happening on the same day. Trump's court appearance in New York on Thursday will be his first in the hush money case since his arraignment last April. Out of the ex-president's four felony indictments, this is on track to be the first one to go to trial, with jury selection currently scheduled for March 25th. With that likely trial date quickly approaching, Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg has been casting the case as a clear-cut election interference, arguing that in concealing illegal payments, Trump hid damaging information from voters in the days leading up to the 2016 election. Also in New York, we are still awaiting a verdict from Judge Arthur and Gorin in Trump's $370 million civil fraud trial, which NBC News reports is expected to come this Friday. Joining our conversation, former Deputy Assistant Attorney General and former U.S. Attorney Harry Littman. Molly is back with us. Hi, Harry. What can we expect from court on Thursday? First, I just want to say this is a huge week. You said at the break something big happening in a case. We're talking about something big happening in five cases. He's like a pinball in an old style pinball game, caroming around from here and there. Thursday in particular, we've got the two big hearings in the in the New York case that he'll attend. We can expect Judge Merchant to set a court date, probably staying with March 25th, no reason uh, not to, and disposing quickly of pretrial motions. But the other big hearing will be in Fulton County, where Judge McAfee has indicated that um, recusing or disqualifying Fonnie Willis is at least on the table, and he intends to hold an evidentiary hearing that could be quite the circus, given that the defendants are claiming uh, that that the prosecutor had they fudged a little on when the relationship started. I don't see why it matters, but the judge seems to think it will. And then, I, if I can just say quickly, in addition to that, Angoran, which is huge, in Mar-a-Lago, uh, Judge Cannon is deciding a SEPA claim that's very tricky. And the most important of them all, the Supreme Court is going to decide whether to what to do with the D.C. Circuit ruling on immunity. That decision could come as soon as Friday, and I think it's likely to come by next week. Okay, you gave us a, a lot. Lots happening. Yeah, a lot is. Ha doesn't it feel, Harry, that every week there is a lot happening? But you are you are for sure correct. This week there is. Let's talk. Let's fast forward to Friday. If we get that verdict uh, from Judge and Gorin, what is it you're going to be looking for? The amount for starters, because I think he'll probably go a little bit under what James is looking for. But then what will he do with the extra late information from the uh, from judge from the judge who has said that the Trump uh, team is still disorganized? Possibly what he's going to do with this prospective um, guilty plea of Weisselberg. And then, most importantly, I think, will he pull the trigger on saying, as the AG has asked him to say, Trump cannot be in the real estate business at all, even can't carry a sandwich board advertising uh, apartments, and he can't be a director or officer of any uh, corporation in New York. That'd be a very huge body blow. It'd be of a piece with what he already held and is now on appeal with the certificates. That's, that'll be the first thing I'm looking for. What a visual, Harry. That one's going to stay with me. Molly, let's talk <laughs> about the fact that th these are New York based cases. You have the New York Times writing this, quote, the dual threats represent a turning point in Mr. Trump's legal odyssey, a week that could reshape his personal and presidential fortunes as he marches toward the Republican nomination. I just I wonder, as a New Yorker, what it means that these two cases that are huge are happening here in New York. Well, I mean, he's he comes from here. I mean, anyone, I grew up here, so I have lived through many iterations of Donald Trump, all of them kind of bad, uh, though this one definitely the worst. But, yeah, I mean, I think that certainly all New Yorkers, we all feel somewhat responsible for this authoritarian nightmare that we unleashed on the I think there are a lot country. of New Yorkers who would disagree with you, but, but, but I think it, it begs this question about brand, right? Yeah. Because so much of his brand was originally rooted in New York. The fact that these could be the cases right. that are, you know, adding E. Jean Carroll, the first to right. really hold him accountable, is notable. I think it is notable. I also think 
he really thinks that he be, him being a candidate will somehow help him in court. And you see that, like he's showing up to all of these. He's using right. these courts as campaign rallies. He's making these speeches, you know, and and it's ultimately really hurting him in court, right? right. Like the number on the E. G. and Carroll number, it didn't have to be eighty three million dollars. It was his grandstanding that raised that number. Right. A question of whether or not he thinks that showing up as a candidate helps him legal or, or that showing up as a candidate helps him politically. Harry, I do wonder with these two cases, g given the timeline, if you think that it sort of shows the limits of, of Trump's team's strategy to delay? There's no limits to the strategy to delay, but we may be coming to the end of the line for him. The most important by far is going to be what happens in the immunity case and if the Supreme Court takes it, in which case I think we're looking at an expedited decision, but even so in around May, or if they let it go and it returns immediately to Chutkin. But then the second thing on the delay train is if somehow McAfee bounces uh, Fonnie Willis, I think it's clear that we are off docket for any hope of having that trial in Fulton County happen this year. I think all eyes are on the civil cases, which are going to hurt him, and especially the uh, election interference case. Will that return to Chutkin? Though I do want to put in a quick plug for the Bragg case. You, you mentioned he's claiming it is election interference. It's obviously what it is. What Trump was trying to do was keep that news from getting out and affecting his electoral fortune. So I think the theory is really sound.